moja kwa moja kutoka hapa Pendo TV mpenzi mtazamaji karibu kwenye habari za Pendo TV msomaji nikiwa naba ni Shikokoti naye mkalimani wa ishara akiwa ni Christine Nyaribo tukianza habari zetu japo kimtasari ni kwamba Matiangi ayonya Marsabit kuwa serikali italazimika kuzima mzozo wa kikabila eneo hilo kwa kutumia njia ya mtutu We are left with only one option only one option for Marsabit and we will exercise that option wizara ya teknolojia na mawasiliano kubuni nafasi za ajira takriban 1200 the state department for broadcasting and telecommunication will be spearheading the development of business process outsourcing that is bpo sector serikali ya tenga shilingi bilioni sita kwa afya lakini usajili huu sasa hivi ambao tumeanza na familia milioni moja na mwaka huu tunaongeza familia laki mbili na na elfu ishirini. Karibu tena. Wakuu wa shule wamekongamana jijini Nairobi kujadili kuhusu mtaalamu mpya wa CBC. Wakuu hao wameongozwa na Kahi Indimuli. We are getting into a transition of um, 844 into the competency based uh, curriculum. And all this we need to put all our thoughts as Kenyans together and we want to hear the voice of the principals because they are very critical in the management of education they are very critical in giving suggestions uh, about uh, what is uh, to be done and therefore as we gather here we will be hearing their voice thing uh, we are trying to look at um, is uh, capitation uh, enough uh, to manage the challenges that the schools have Uh, can we bring in other critical uh, stakeholders to support in the funding of education, improvement of infrastructure uh, and the rest? Here we are talking of key stakeholders as the parents. What role uh, are they expected to play? Uh, this is what we will be trying to discuss. The challenges that uh, schools faced uh, last year where we had a number of our schools being touched question we are asking ourselves uh, is discipline going are principals uh, therefore and teachers lacking the, the, the might to manage issues discipline where have we gone wrong how is the children's act uh, uh, being used to manage our students in, in our schools to share with you thank you very much asanteni sana and welcome to mandela wajia and garisa We had only two cases in the whole of the region. Two cases. And Na tukisonga mbele ni kwamba Joseph Wamboa Mgurgenzi wa mipango katika idara ya mawasiliano na teknolojia nchini imesema kwamba amesema kwamba kufikia mwaka wa 2027 idara hiyo itatenga ama itabodi nafasi za ajira takriban 1200 kati ya mwaka wa 2023 hadi mwaka 2027 Through the five year medium term plans the current medium term plan 3 that is 2018 2022 is coming to an end by June 2023 the fourth medium term plan 2023 to 2027 of Kenya Fusion 2030 will succeed the third medium term plan 2018 2022 which was which was officially launched on 2nd February 2022 at Kenya Kenyatta International Conference Center 
The preparation of the medium term plans is carried out by 26 sector working groups under the NABLA economic and so social and political pillars. The State Department for Broadcasting and Telecommunication will be spearheading the development of business process outsourcing, that is BPO sector working group, and uh, the economy pillar. And uh, the principal secretary of broadcasting and telecommunication is the chair of the sector working group. The fourth MTP will be second last phase of the Kenya Fusion 2030 and will therefore set the momentum for the transition to the next long-term development agenda for the country. Preparation of the fourth medium term will be guided by the Kenya Fusion 2030 and lesson learned in the implementation of previous MTPs and sector plans. It will also be guided by the constitution and will incorporate the priorities outlined in manifesto of political party forming the government after the next general election scheduled for August 2022. As you are aware, the country has achieved several milestones in implementing medium term three policies, programs and projects. COVID-19 has interfered with the implementation plans of main programs and projects. The fourth medium term plan is therefore expected to prioritize implementation of economic recovery strategies to reposition the economy on a steady and sustainable growth trajectory. The aim will be to revitalize the performance in all economic sectors in order to foster growth, employment creation, and poverty reduction. In line with the constitution, the fourth medium term plan will be prepared through a wide consultation process aimed at ensuring inclusiveness and building consensus on the identification of policies, programs, and projects for implementation over the medium term period. Development of the BPO sector is expected to facilitate growth and development of knowledge-based economy for Kenya. Under the economy pillar, the sector is expected to create over 200,000 jobs in BPO and all enabled IT enabled services in the medium term period. The target is to continue to, to contribute towards 10% of gross domestic product growth rate by the year 2030. Na mpenzi mtazamaji tukisonga mbele ni kuwa mba serekali imetenga shilingi bilioni sita ili kupiga jekis na kuwapa bima wa Kenya ambao wangependa kujisajili na serekali ili kupata matibabu ya bure. Hii hapa habari hiyo kiu kamilifu. UHC ni lengo lake kubwa ni kuhakikisha kwamba wananchi wanaweza kupata huduma za afya na zaidi ya hiyo kuhakikisha kwamba huduma hizo zinapatikana bila gharama kwa mtu yeyote sababu so, tumeona kwamba kuna wengi jamii nyingi ambazo zimesumbuka kwa sababu ugonjwa ukiingia kwenye boma inabidi watu wauze vitu watu wakope michango ifanywe ili watu waweze kupata fedha za kupata matibabu lakini usajili huu sasa hivi ambao tumeanza na familia milioni moja na mwaka huu tunaongeza familia laki mbili na, na elfu ishirini ni safari ambayo tumeanza ambayo serikali inalenga kuwasajili wale ambao hawajiwezi na kwa sababu ya shughuli hiyo serikali ilitenga shili, imetenga shilingi bilioni sita ambazo tayari zimeshalipwa kwenye shirika kuu la bima la afya NHIF ili wale ambao wamesajiliwa ambao tulikuwa tumelenga milioni moja waweze kupata huduma hizo na tunafuraha kwa sababu uh, katika nchi yetu kaunti zote zimeweza kufanya usajili huu na wale ambao ndio waanzilishi wa mradi huu wameanza kupata yale matunda ya uh, mradi huu kupitia hiyo kadi ya bima wanaweza kupata matibabu bila kulipa chochote katika hospitali kadha wa kadha nchini 
kwa nchi nchi zote ambazo zimeweza kufikia lengo la UHC hazikufika hapo yani ya mali ambapo kila mtu katika nchi anapata uh, bima ni safari na nchi zingine zimechukua muda mrefu lakini sisi tukiendelea vile tunavyoendelea kwa muda usio mrefu tutapata kwamba wale wote ambao wanafaa kusajiliwa na serikali wataweza kusajiliwa ambazo ni idadi ya familia milioni nne na wale ambao wanaweza kujilipia tunarahisisha ulipaji wao na kuhakikisha pia kupitia sheria ambazo sasa zimeshapitishwa bungeni kwamba itakuwa ni lazima kwa yule ambaye anaweza kupata bima aweze kupata bima hiyo ili aweze kupata kinga kutoka kuwa kutoka umaskini kwa sababu ya maneno ya afya kwa hivyo wale ambao wako katika biashara kubwa pia biashara ndogo ndogo kama ni wana boda boda ama wale ambao wanafanya kazi ya ukuzaji ama chochote wote sasa tutawarahisishia ili waweze kujisajili na kulipa NHIF hata tuna mazungumzo hivi sasa na kampuni za Safaricom kuona kama tunaweza kurahisisha mtu aweze kulipa kila siku na tumepiga hesabu na tukaona kwamba mtu akilipa kila siku itamaanisha atalipa shilingi saba peke yake kwa shilingi saba atakuwa ametoa ile yani mstuko mkubwa ambao unaweza kuja kwa sababu ya ugonjwa kuingia katika familia. Lazima tuone kwamba watu wameweza kupata huduma za afya mahali inapowapasa huduma ambazo ni za sawa kwa wakati ufao na pia kwa bei pale palipo na malipo sababu tunajua viwango vingine hatulipishi lakini pale palipo na malipo pia malipo yasiyoumiza mwananchi lakini vile vile pia tumekubaliana kwa kauli moja kwamba safari hii itafaulu pakubwa ikiwa tutakumbushana kwamba kukinga ni bora kuliko kutibu tunaomba ya kwamba sisi zote tumepata hii bima tuende hospitalini Kilifi County transmission rates za mama kutoka HIV kwa mama kwa mtoto iko juu sana. Na kwa sababu zile wa Siri amesema ya kwamba wa, watu wengi waende hospitali kupata mtoto. Na ndio tunasema kwa sababu kuna bima tafadhali mama akitaka kupanga kupata mtoto aende hospitalini na pia baba kwa sababu tunataka watu wapimwe. Na hii NHIF inasaidia hiyo maneno sana kutoka 11% iko juu kuliko ile average ya Kenya na tunaomba tushirikiane. Ah hii bima ilinisaidia wakati nilipokuwa na matatizo na nilitajika kufanyiwa operation. Ndio maana yenyewe nilijiandikisha mwaka jana mwezi wa 8 na kwa wakati nikijiandikisha nilikuwa tu na matatizo lakini sikuwa hasa kile kini ambacho kilikuwa kinanitatiza sikuwa najua lakini nilipoanza kwenda hospitali ndio nikapatikana niko na matatizo ya fibroids kwa hivyo kawa inahitajika nifanywe hiyo operation na kilihitajika kulipa moja na ishirini. na kiupande wangu nisingeweza kwa sababu ya mapato hasa mimi tu ni mfanyabiashara wa niko na kibanda tu ya mboga. Kwa hivyo kwa upande wangu nisingeweza ile bili ilikuwa kubwa. Lakini kwa sababu nilikuwa na ile kadi ilinisaidia kalipa ile bill na nikatoka hospitali. Naomba wajiunge na hii kadi inasaidia. Manake mambo ya afya unaweza kushikika wakati wowote. Na unaweza kuwa hata huna hata senti nyumbani lakini ukiwa na hiyo kadi inakusaidia. Almashauri ya kutathmini ubora wa bidhaa nchini KEPS imepanga ama imeweka mikakati kabambe ya kurahisisha kazi miongoni mwa wafanyakazi katika idara hiyo. Imewe, imehakikisha kwamba bidhaa zinazoagizwa nje ya nchi zinafiki viwango hitajika kwa manufaa ya wakenya. Almashauri hiyo imeweka mikakati kufuatia madai ya utepetevu katika shughuli ya kukagua bidhaa hizo humu nchini electorate and in the testing laboratories. The main focus for this 
uh, second engagement is to be able to uh, address the issues of destination inspection. How uh, shall we be able to process uh, these goods coming into the country uh, so that we do not have delays at the port of entry? Uh, we are very much aware that uh, for us to be competitive as a country, we have to reduce the logistic cost and goods delaying at the port will generally uh, increase the cost of goods. So we are very much aware of that and that is why we we'll do targeting. Targeting for those risky products, test them and also uh, ensure that we use documentation. This is a common practice uh, world over where you know, manufacturers are expected to issue certificate of analysis, test reports, and it's on that basis that we use those documents to verify and indicate that these goods. Na tukisonga mbele ni kwamba waziri wa mambo ya ndani daktari Fred Matiangi ameonya kuwa serikali italazimika kutumia mtutu ili kuleta amani katika kaunti ya Marsabit. Matiangi amesema hayo baada ya kushuhudiwa makabiliano makali katika kaunti hiyo huku baadhi ya wakazi wakilazimika kutoroka makwao ili kuokoa maisha yao. Matiangi amezilaumu mamlaka za kaunti ya Marsabit kwa kukalia kimya kuhusu swala la mzozo katika kaunti hiyo ya Marsabit. It actually reminds you of the situation of Rwanda. The attitude that you hear between communities. It is totally senseless. And as you say, none of those people is innocent. It, we are left with only one option, only one option for Marsabit. And we will exercise that option. No one should blame the government because we are going to do in Marsabit what we must do to secure that place and secure the population of our people. All I can say for sure, without fear of contradiction, it is not going to be fun. Waziri Monica Juma amehakikishia taifa kwamba mafuta sasa yameregeshwa ama yameregeshwa sehemu yote humo nchini. Kauli yake Monica Juma inajiri wiki kadhaa baada ya kukosekana kwa mafuta katika maeneo tofauti humo nchini. Serikali kuu ikinyoshewa kidole cha lawama wakati huo Juma amesema takriban lita milioni 13.3 zimesafirishwa kote nchini. Hata hivyo amesema idara ya upelelezi nchini DCI itachunguza na kuwafungulia mashtaka kampuni zinazoongeza bei ya mafuta. Naye waziri wa mambo ya ndani Daktari Fred Matiangi ameitaka serikali kuunda almashauri ya kushughulika na masuala ya mafuta humu nchini. How did we get there? There was a time an organization that was created in this country called National Oil Corporation. The government at that time thought right, and we actually should go back to that. The government should have a leeway in some of these principal sectors to mediate a situation where cartels seek to strangle the sector. Because if we had a vibrant and effective working National Oil Corporation, they would be supplying fuel and selling fuel at a lower price, and the cartels will not be able to exact the impact that they were exacting on us. To the extent that as government we have to resort to tough action. To Na tu kisonga mbele ni kwamba watu watatu wamekamatwa kule kisumu kwa kuhusika na rapsha wakati shuguliza kuwateua viongozi kwenye chama cha ODM zikiendelea. Uko nyakachi mwaniaji wakiti cha wakilisho wanawake Ruth Odinga alilazimika kukimbia kuokoa maisha yake baada ya kundi la vijana kupanga kumvamia wakidai alipanga kuiba kura katika shughuli hiyo wafuasi wa ODM aidha wamepongeza chama hicho cha ODM kwa kufanya kazi kidijitali kwa leo tunatarajia kuwa na matokeo mazuri kusikuwa na any chaos kwa sababu hii ni Raila Zone sasa kuchukua na any chaos yenye italeta picha mbaya kwa county ODM has done a very good thing very wonderful indeed one of the parties that has gone digital so this time around there is no kicking of the deb so we are going digital on the same technology i must say it's faster than paper and i must congratulate our party odm for having been the party that has started this kind of uh, voting pattern it has not even been explained by iebc itself the
Na mpenzi mtazamaji kufikia hapo unachukua kopo la maji na nikirejea narejea na habari za kimataifa pamoja na zile za sputi. Nam, karibu tena. Urusi inaendelea na mashambulizi dhidi ya taifa la Ukraine huku makumi ya maelfu ya vikosi vya Urusi vikionekana vikiingia katika mji mkuu wa Mariupol na silaha hatari. Vikosi hivyo vya Urusi vimekilipua kiwanda cha vyuma cha Mariupol ambacho kimekuwa nguzo muhimu ya Ukraine mjini humo. Kulingana na Urusi, Ukraine imefeli kutii agizo la kujisalamisha. Aidha mnamo Jumanne Marekani, Kanada, Britain, Ufaransa pamoja na Ujerumani zimesema zitaipa msaada wa kivita Ukraine kupambana na Urusi. Katika mji huo wa Mariupol makumi ya maelfu ya watu wamegwama bila maji wala chakula kwani ni vigumu mashirika ya msaada wa kibinadamu kupenyeza hadi mji huo wa Mariupol huku mili ya watu waliokufa ikitapaka kila mahali. Serikali ya Ukraine imeweka wazi kanda za video zinazoonyesha raia wake wakiishi kwenye pango wakiomba msaada. Urusi imeonekana ikikana kuhusiana na vifo vya watu wa Ukraine. Na mpenzi mtazamaji tukielekea kwenye spoti wacha tuone Dennis Liosi ametuandalia nini. Mji Olimpiki Helud Kipchoge alielekea mkutano wa riadha huko nchini pamoja na makocha, wakufuzi na washikadao mbalimbali wa michezo hiyo kwa mazungumzo ya mawaidha. Ni michezo iliyodhaminiwa na shirika la raga huko nchini na kampuni ya Isuzu. Mkutano huo uliandaliwa jijini Nairobi. Kipchoge alizungumzia umuhimu wa nidhamu kwa wanamichezo kama njia moja ya kufaulu katika tasnia ya michezo. Immediately after the results has been announced, forget it. You have no control of the past. You have, control, you have the control of the present and the future. His lessons don't only relate to the sport. They relate to leadership. They relate to management. They relate to the way we live our lives. You've given us the blueprint of why we need to look back and most importantly, set up the right system. Kamati ya kitaifa ya Olimpiki nchini imerekodi siku mia moja ya mechi za michuano za Commonwealth. Sherehe hiyo imefanyika jijini Nairobi. Huku vilabu za humu nchini zikitarajiwa kuanza mazoezi mwanzoni mwa Jumali Jalo. Vilabu vitakaopewa kipaumbele kwenye mazoezi hiyo ni pamoja na timu za wanandondi. We want to see the, the diversity of uh, medals also when we go to the Commonwealth Games and I believe uh, that uh, going forward all these uh, veterans and our sportsmen uh, the coaches could see the excitement the passion that it is in it uh, to make sure that uh, they cut a slot uh, for themselves uh, to participate and represent the country uh, in um, commonwealth games in england Kwingineko ni kuwa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta aliungana na Olimpiki kwa ulemavu wa kuona hapo jana katika maandalizi ya kuwakilisha timu za Kenya kwenye Olimpiki za Dunia itakayofanyika Brazil mwezi Mei. Timu hiyo inashirikisha wachezaji 105 watakaowakilisha michuano tano tofauti za Olimpiki. Hii itakuwa mara ya kwanza kwa taifa la Kenya kushiriki michezo za kidunia. Timu hiyo imekuwa mazoezini kwa takriban mwezi mmoja katika uwanja wa Kasarani kwa udhamini wa Wizara ya Michezo.
This team, which has been in camp since the 4th of April, has received adequate preparation and is ready to break the 2017 record of 17 medals. Besides, besides the usual training for competition, the team has also undergone sensitization on anti-doping regulations on mental health and on media relations. So they'll be able to represent us extremely well uh, when they win the gold medals <laughs> and they are, they're interviewed. We're therefore very, very confident, Your Excellency, of posting great results. You will join the ranks of your abled brothers and sisters who have brought pride to this country and I am certain as Ambassador Amina has said, that you too shall not fail in bringing pride to your country. And as you proceed, proceed knowing that you have the full support, not only of your government, but your fellow brothers and sisters from Kenya. Katika safu ya sporti, jina langu ni Dennis Liosi. Na kufikia hapo mpenzi mtazamaji sina la ziada kwa niaba ya wote waliofanikisha habari hii na kutakia wakati mwema jina langu Laban Shikokoti.